Hey everyone, so today we're going to be working on a Ford Transit and I'll be showing you how to replace the oil cooler gasket. This is another common leak on the Ford Transits and it's not only for the Ford Transits, it's also, also the VW crafters suffer from oil leaks from the oil coolers. These gaskets just go hard over time and they don't seal properly. This is an Erling aftermarket gasket and that's the part number in case you need it. These are the tools you require for turning the oil cooler gasket. You'll need a torque wrench capable of 23 newton meters and if you're doing the oil change you would need a torque wrench that is also capable of 25 newton meters which this one does you'll need a couple of extensions i like to use a 3 8 ratchet with the extensions and also a 1 4th smaller ratchet deep 10 mm socket this is quite important then another quarter inch 10 mm socket and the 3 8 10 mm socket the more sizes you have in different variations the better and the easier it will make this job if you're changing the oil at the same time you depending on the oil filter cap that's fitted to your transit most of them are fitted with the 38 mm nut at the bottom and you might also need a long bar similar to this just for extra leverage because that one bolt at the top is quite difficult to get into so that's quite important to have and you'll also need a light of some sort just make life easier and some brake cleaner just to clean up any of the oil and also the oil cooler which you'll see later on in the video you need a pick set something similar to this just to remove the old seal from the oil cooler so coming underneath the vehicle now near the sump this vehicle was due for a service so we're going to be replacing the gasket as well at the same time it makes life a little bit easier as you can see i've already opened up the oil filter housing and the cap so i'm just drained out I've drained out the oil filter. So generally, if you see a leak so on this area here, as you can see, there's been a buildup of oil over time. And if you look here as well, all along the seam, you will see oil buildup on your particular one. This one's very minute, but we're just going to be replacing this gasket now, even though this leak is very minor. It's better to catch it now early while it's already being serviced at the same time. So if you look here at the back as well, you can see a little bit of build up. This is just a better look of what the oil cooler looks like. And it's just this whole housing over here. This is the torque setting, if anyone's curious, on the oil filter cap, 25 newton meters. And as you can see, this one does not have a drain plug fitted. So what we need to do is, if I bring it up here, the hardest part of the job is trying to get access to that top bolt there. So you're gonna remove that bolt, that bolt, that bolt. Take off this connector here. So just push that connector in there, make sure you use two hands so you don't break off the end of it and then you just pull it out like so and just tuck this to one side. So you can leave all the oil cooler lines and everything in place, all we're going to do is just swing this this side when we remove all the bolts and we'll just turn the gasket in place. So just again, the bolts you want to access are those three there that you can see, this one here that one there and there's this one over here i'll show you all of those when we remove it keep your oil container ready because a lot of oil is going to drip out from here even though we've gone ahead and drained the oil from the oil filter so just keep that in mind as well and also just make sure you do this when the engine's not too hot because you can burn yourself with hot oil so like i said earlier that top bolt there where Wait. you can see the ratchet is up there at the moment that's the hardest of the of the lot so what i find works the best if i move this here so this is the deep socket one fourth ratchet 10 mm deep socket like i said this one goes in there so you put it in there and use a bar like this just so you get extra leverage and then you can go ahead and open that bolt there that's the hardest one like i said everything else will work with the 3 8 ratchet and a 10 mm socket now you can see i've removed the oil cooler and I left those two bolts there. So those two are the long bolts that are easily accessed. So you can just leave them there as a guide. So if you look here, the seal has kind of gone flat over here. And even there at the bottom there, it goes flat over there. So these are the all the bolt holes in case you want to take count. So it's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So there's six bolts in total that must be removed before you can separate from the block. So you can just use a pick and get in there, which I'll show you now. 
so that's on the engine side on the block so we have to go ahead and clean all of that over there I like to use a little bit of brake cleaner on the rag and I'll go ahead and clean all of that over there and as you can see here I've got my container ready oil is dripping from the oil cooler so just make sure you don't forget that otherwise you get a lot of oil on yourself and that's probably the last thing you want so get a pick like this just get in there and pull it out so just like that get in there and you'll feel the seal is quite hard and it just pulls out like so so as you can see if I hold the gasket like this it's quite stiff this one's not too bad there's, I've seen worse if you just twist it like this they just crack this one's not too bad most of there is okay but the common fail points are just around here the lower points so I'll show you what the new one looks like so if, just for comparison if I just hold it like this it's quite stiff and I'll show you what the new one will look like and so this is the new seal whichever way I hold it you can see how rubbery it is and how flexible so that's what you want to see like I said that seal that I just showed you wasn't too bad hence the reason why underneath when I showed you the initial leak it wasn't too obvious but from experience I know that they leak over time so it just makes sense to do them early on before it gets too bad like I said that's the part number in case you need it and we'll go ahead and clean up that whole area then we'll fit this new seal so make sure you get rid of all that old oil So you want the block side to look something like that, just as clean as possible. Depending on where the vehicle was used, you might notice a lot of buildup of dirt over there. Make sure you clean that and none of that gets into any of the oil galleys over there. Also, this is the oil cooler side. You just want it as clean as possible. So I used that same pick and a cloth and I just cleaned inside the grooves there. And now we'll go ahead and install the new seal. The new gasket in place now. One thing I forgot to mention is just make sure you compare your old gasket to your new gasket, especially if you're going aftermarket. I've done a few of these, so I know exactly what gaskets fit, but always a good thing to do, just compare the gaskets before you try and fit it here and in case it doesn't fit properly. As you can see, this is a perfect fit. And just for reference, this is a 2.4 liter TDDI. I've serviced engines like this in the past. If you go down to my Ford Transit playlist, you can see all the videos of all the common faults on these vehicles. So using your torque wrench, Go ahead and torque each bolt down to 23 newton meters. As part of the service, we've got a new oil filter installed. And we cleaned up everything and a new O-ring is installed here. It's the part number of the Bosch filter in case you need it. Now that I've finished servicing the vehicle, uh, this is the oil if for reference if anyone needs it. You'll get a different variant in Europe and other parts of the world. So now, because we open up the oil cooler, we want to build up oil pressure before the engine starts. So what we'll do is, just at the back there, hopefully you can see that, that connector down there. That's a crank angle sensor connector. I'll just go ahead and disconnect that. If you want a detailed video on how to do that, I've also made another video of the crank angle sensor. You can check that in the description, I'll put the link over there. So I'll just go ahead and disconnect that and I'll take you inside the cabin and we'll crank the engine to build up oil pressure. Keep in mind when you do this, you might get a check engine light and you might get a fault code. So that's a bit of caution I can inform you about. So if you don't have a scan tool to clear the code, there is another way you can reset it, but just bear that in mind. Also this being the direct injection type engine with the older type mechanical injectors, it might still fire up. So I've just gone ahead and disconnected the crank held sensor as I showed you. Now we'll just go ahead and crank it. Always keep your foot on the brake. On these older models, as you can see here, that's the fault code. So when the glow plug light starts to flash, that indicates that there's a fault. As I said, you heard the engine start. So if you have a newer vehicle, you can use the same process, but when it's a TDCI, your engine will not start because the injectors will basically be cut off. This being the older model with this sort of an injector, these are mechanical injectors. It will try to start, but it won't run. I just thought I'd give you that tip. So in case you do any turbo work or anything similar, you can always disconnect the crank angle sensor and build up pressure that way. Go ahead and plug that back in and start the engine. Essentially why I did that was for the oil pump to just turn over 
and for engine oil pressure to build up without the engine running constantly so now we'll just go ahead and check the oil again and then start it now everything's plugged back in and we'll go ahead and start the vehicle keep an eye on the oil light over there so essentially that's what you want to see you want to see the oil light go out immediately or if you're starting it for the first time if it goes out within about two seconds that's also still fine if you've just done a fresh oil change or done this oil cooler gasket change so i hope this video was of some help to you if it was please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more interesting videos and other car related and camper related content see ya